Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 143 talking about unlimited cards. I'm going to be focusing on their value, how to spot them, and what you should be looking at when investing in them. As some of you guys know, especially those people over on Instagram, I recently completed my set of 40 unlimited dual lands. I picked up the last one down in the Portland area at Portland GP. Super happy about this. I really like the way that these look. They're all over the place for their condition from terribly beat to really nice uh, mint. Usually when I mention unlimited cards, people know that Black Lotus or Moxes, Time Walk Ancestral were printed there. And that's the first thing that jumps to people's mind. Unlimited is a very rich set with a lot of investment opportunities beyond power. Now, long term, power definitely has a value to it. It has jumped a lot in this last year because of the interest in Vintage Masters, and it's likely to continue to grow steadily over time. But I think there's some hidden gems, especially when it comes to the dual lands in Unlimited. For a little bit of reference, for each single alpha or beta that was printed, you've got about five to six Unlimiteds printed. So the print run is significantly higher on Unlimiteds, but reasonable. It's still pretty tough to find these, where the alpha and beta are very, very difficult at this point. Uh, compared to Revise, though, for each Unlimited, there are about 12 Revised of that same particular card, at least in English White Border. We don't know how much of the Black Border uh, was printed in Europe. Wizards has never uh, released those numbers, or even the White Border in Europe. Uh, I believe on the White Border the numbers are really small from what I've heard from unofficial sources for foreign, but we'll get into that in another video. But the Unlimited are about an 8% chance in finding them if you're looking at White Border Dual Lands at this point. This set was called Unlimited. I was so happy about this set when it came out as a kid. I was like, oh, I'm going to be able to grab lots of these cards. I just got in. I got some packs of Arabian Nights. They're gone. There's some Unlimited here. And then no, it was really, oops, super limited. What happened was, is Wizards figured out that people played the game very differently than they had initially thought. They initially thought that individuals would buy a starter deck and like three booster packs and build their decks out of that. When people started buying boxes, some of these cards were a little bit overpowered when you started playing four of them in a deck. So they really went through and they pulled some cards out of the Unlimited Edition. Not all of these were pulled for power level, but many of them were. Uh, some of them were pulled for other reasons, though, such as they were too confusing. Combat was already a difficult idea to get around, especially in an environment that had banding. Oh, that's a difficult mechanic. But to have a river that runs through the middle of the area, and then you got to divide them up, and then you got flyers, it's just really a nightmare. And I thought they pulled Dwarven Demolition Team because it was just too weak. But apparently it was strong enough to reprint an 8th edition. A 3 casting cause, 1-1 one, one in red that destroys walls. Doesn't seem top of my list, but does have really cool artwork, so who knows. A lot of the cards that were pulled have actually come back. Consecrate Land being one of my absolute favorites. I used to play a blue-white control deck with Swords to Plowshares and Wrath of Gods and Mishra's Factories that were consecrated as the only way to win the game. Might have been a grindy player originally. I was also really happy to see Icy Manipulator come back. That's a wonderful card, definitely not overpowered, really cool effect to it. Now we're going to focus on actually spotting unlimited cards in the wild. Once you go through this video, you should be looking for them at every opportunity, especially anytime somebody has a dual land, because it may be an opportunity to make an interesting trade. Alpha and Beta are black border. No problem. Once we get into unlimited and revised, you're looking at white border. But there's a lot more to it than that. So take a look at these two underground seeds and see if you can find ways that they are different. Pause a second here, write down as many of them as you can, and then move forward. I'm going to jump right into them. The big one is the tap symbol. Revised added the tap symbol, which has this kind of iconography to it. It lets people know that you're moving it sideways, although it's written in English and later they moved it on to be an arrow. But that's a dead giveaway that you're looking at revised is that tap symbol. Not everything's got a tap symbol, though. Another way is these beveled edges, the corners. The Unlimited have this effect so it looks like it's deeper. Let's look at that a little bit closer. Here's a really good way to show that edge. It adds some depth to the card. If you see that beveled edge, 
And let's go back here, one slide. And there's no copyright number down here on the bottom. It just says copyright, but not a number. You are in unlimited. Fourth edition brings back that beveled edge, but has a copyright date on it. The other big way is they're darker. Side by side, you will noticeably tell the difference with Unlimited. The colors are just richer and darker. The lightest out there are revised. The middle is Unlimited, which is what you're going to see most often. And the super ultra rare dark cards are known as summer cards. I got a whole nother video. Here's a link. Go check that out. If you have any summer cards, you have hit the jackpot. The commons are worth over 50 bucks a piece. There's a lot of value in unlimited cards, especially those that are playable. You really need to know your prices here. The difference in value is about 100 to 120 bucks, or 20 to 30 percent of the total value for an underground sea to go from revised to unlimited. And the better condition that's in, the more value you get out of it. You've only got about $100 difference in the goods, but if you look at the near mints here, near mint is sold out at $479. It's very difficult to find an unlimited. You're looking at a $150 difference. The value though is often not that 20 to 30%. It can be as high as 70 to 90%. Scrublands seem to be really tough to find an unlimited. Card Kingdom, wonderful selection of cards, only has one in stock. It was my last one to find was an unlimited Scrubland for my 40. There's lots of Scrublands out there for Revised, but you're looking at a huge jump in value when you move from Revised to Unlimited. Condition matters a lot, though. Now, Alpha, Beta, Unlimited Games, ABU, has some of the best high-res pictures for cards that you're going to pick up. Uh, I know the owner from way back. Very cool place. They are a little bit on the expensive side, but you know exactly what you're getting. But the difference in condition between these cards is huge. Looking at it from a distance, you see, oh, there's a little bit of dirt there, but it's $100 in difference. Why? When you get up really close to these cards, one is almost gradable or gradable near mint, and the other one has clearly been shuffled outside of a sleeve several times. It's got that dirt and grime on it, and some of the artwork's starting to wear off. This type of difference doesn't matter to most players. It matters a lot to collectors, and that's one of the things you need to be aware of when trading for Unlimited, is that Unlimited Alpha, Beta, Legends, Arabian Nights, all of those sets condition matters a lot for the highest value cards. You can often trade up from a revised to an unlimited just by throwing in a card or two. People are very happy to get some high value playable cards and I would be happy to make this trade. Yes, Cryptic Command has jumped from 25 to 60 bucks recently, but there's a good chance we'll see another reprint of Cryptic Command at some point. Cryptic Command could fall in price. Revised and Unlimited Dual Lands just go up, and Unlimiteds are going up faster, or at least I believe so, than the Revised are. The Unlimiteds are doing really well in the marketplace. They're really tough to find. What happens is people collect a set of power, and then they're like, oh, let's put together a set of Unlimited. Most of the Unlimited cards are not played at all, super easy to pick up. But Dual Lands, finding them in good condition is really, really tough. The other cards, there's some cool cards in Unlimited. Lich, very fun card, not a good card. Chaos Orb, broken good card, but nobody lets you play with it. The value of Unlimited cards is based on how much those cards are played. In EDH, in Legacy, in Vintage, in Kitchen Table Magic. Chaos Orb used to be worth significantly more than two or three dual lands. Now it's worth significantly less than two or three dual lands. When trading for value long term, go for cards that are being played, that people play in multiple formats. Dual lands are one of those type of cards, and there's a great opportunity for you to trade your revised into some unlimiteds, work with uh, dealers or people who are putting together sets, trade them back into revised, and make some value there back and forth by getting people what they really want. Thanks. This has been Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech. We just hit 5,000 subscribers. Lots of videos coming this week. Thank you to everybody who's over there on Patreon. I greatly appreciate it.